I always tell people that 3D printing is the ultimate tool to complement all your other hobbies. Today we're going to jump into one of my favorite hobbies, PC building, specifically case modding. With the new 50 series cards around the corner, I wanted the perfect case when the time comes to put one in. Here's what we're working with, a battered old Corsair 220T. During my move to the west coast last year, I smashed the glass panel as well, so I've been using a 3D printed one with a fresh air intake for my GPU. It wouldn't fit my all-in-one liquid cooler, so I had to mount it to the front on the outside of the case. It also has some glue and plywood on one side from where I wall mounted it in my old shop. Pretty rough shape for sure, and anything would be an improvement. But we're not just looking for an improvement here, we're looking for the best. This is the 2006 Mac Pro, heavily inspired by its predecessor, the Power Macintosh G5 Tower. Released in the early 2000s, it was around the time when Apple pivoted from colorful bright plastic computers to the more streamlined, anodized aluminum minimalist look that we associate with them today. In 2006, this thing retailed for 2,500 US dollars, which is almost 4,000 adjusted for inflation. Of course, I only paid 60 Canadian moose knuckles for this off marketplace. In my opinion, this is one of the most iconic computer cases from my youth, and today we're going to use a bunch of 3D printing to fit some modern hardware into it. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. More on that later. First, we have to take this thing apart, and it truly was ahead of its time. Everything slides out, including the power supply, drive bays, CD-ROM compartment, which oddly enough was still using an IDE cable in 06, and even the RAM, which is on its own daughter boards. This model had the dual Intel Xeon chips at 2.66 gigahertz with huge heat sinks. The board is laid out in a way that put all the parts that need active cooling in a sort of wind tunnel. Of course this is all e-waste now, but I'm going to harvest some of the heat sinks for my other projects. There's a few things I want to keep to maintain the early 2000s Apple charm on this case. First off is the power cable. When inserted it's flush with the rest of the case giving a seamless look. And since it's rated for 13 amps at 120 volts, it should be more than enough for modern hardware. I definitely want to keep the functionality of this lever that releases the hefty aluminum side panel. And finally, the only screws I found during disassembly on the exterior of the case was four small Phillips screws securing the grill for the rear fan. I'm going to try to not use many, if any, screws that show on the exterior for mounting the new parts. I wanted to reuse these fans as they seem really hefty and with a rating of 0.7 amps I was sure they'd move a ton of air. Sadly though, Apple used a weird pinout for these fans where instead of the fourth pin taking a PWM signal, it actually requires a voltage between 0 and 12 volts to set the speed. Something I'm just not able to do using a modern motherboard if I want to be able to control these fan speeds based on component temperatures. And finally, I want to keep the functionality of the front power button and power LED. Disassembly was pretty straightforward and once all the junk is out, we have an inner frame and the aluminum that wraps around it. The standoffs for the motherboard are specific to the board that Apple used, so we need to adapt them for modern ATX boards. Of course, this will go in upside down or inverted. To make an adapter, we first need to get the current standoff positions into our CAD program. For this, I used a good old fashioned cardboard template, an older motherboard I had lying around, and a bunch of test prints to check fit. The parts I designed will have some integrated nuts in them for the new motherboard to mount to. We also need to cut down the unwanted standoffs so they don't scrape the backside of the motherboard. For this, I used a drill with a small pilot point. This worked great and took no time as aluminum is quite soft. I was really hoping that these were hollow all the way down so I could tap more threads in and use bolts to mount the adapters, but that didn't seem to be the case. So to mount them, I'll just peen over the remaining standoff to grip the printed parts using a small punch. Now we can figure out the power button. On the back of the button is three wires. 
I rang these out with my multimeter to confirm that one wire is a shared negative and the others are single pins for the power LED and on off switch. With a little soldering, I attached some new wires with some connectors for my front panel headers. When I tested this though, the signal from the positive LED pin connected with the shared ground and caused the computer to shut down. To fix this, I just bypassed the shared ground and soldered new wires directly to the LED. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. With industry-leading rapid prototyping solutions, PCBWay can have a part headed to your doorstep within days. Whether you're looking for circuit boards, machined parts, or even 3D prints in stainless steel, PCBWay has everything you need to make your next project a successful one. Their website makes it super simple to order parts. Just drag your PCB designs or 3D model into your browser and choose every detail you need to make sure it meets and exceeds your expectations. Head over to the link in the description to learn more and help support the people who support this channel. Now we need a place to put the cooling fans and a radiator for the CPU. For this, I designed two parts, one that I could bolt my fans and radiator to and another to mount inside the front of the case to the existing standoffs. This means I can assemble everything on this sled and slide it into place. In theory, this would have worked well, but I was really not happy with how flimsy it was, so I decided to bolt the rad right to the mesh of the front panel. For this, I just had to enlarge a few holes, and luckily, these nice screws that held in the old hard drives fit perfectly, and they don't seem too out of place. To keep the optical drive front bezels in place, I printed these small clips. This worked great and keeps the stock look of the front panel. The power supply will live in the back where the old one was. For this I designed a small shelf with a cutout for the fan which will also help evacuate some of the hot air from the case. I also carefully extracted the existing power supply input connector and soldered on a small length of a power cord to act as an extension to reach the new power supply. I also designed a small part to mount the connector to its existing spot. The rear fan was an easy retrofit and I just traced the holes from a 120mm fan, drilled them out, and used fan screws to secure it. There's this hole in the bottom of the case where Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas used to live, but I figured I could use this as a fresh air intake. For this I designed a small scoop that redirects behind the rad and pulls in just a little bit of fresh air before it pushes it through the fins of the radiator. The rear I.O. on the existing motherboard protrudes about two inches from the rest of the board, so to address this, I did some careful cutting to make a hole big enough to pass my cables through. There's just not enough room to put a traditional I.O. shield back here, so for now, I'll use this protective rim so I can pass my cables through and plug them in. I made this part for the front USB ports as well, and I opted for two USB 3.0 ports connected to the motherboard's USB headers and a 20 gigabit per second USB-C port that attaches to a PCIe card. This will be great for 3D scanners, external hard drives, and VR headsets. I also picked up a pack of these locking wheels and printed a bracket that clips onto the bottom of the PC case as well so I can roll this thing around. Okay, here's the final build. There's a small strip that bolts to the existing standoffs for a little bit of cable management and a comically large GPU support pillar to hold up my brick of a 1080. Idle temperatures sit just a few degrees above room temperature 
and during gaming, my 14900KF stays below 60 degrees, and my trusty old 1080 maxes out around 70 degrees, even with a slight overclock. It seems these perforated front and rear panels supply a bunch more air compared to my old case, which is awesome, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm going to publish these files for free up on printables, so if you see one of these old Mac cases for a good price, definitely pick it up. If you like this sort of PC related 3D printing content, make sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.